everyone and welcome back. It has been a month. What? Can you believe it? It simultaneously feels like it's been four whole years. And also, it was just yesterday that I was talking to you guys. <laughs> So let's start with September 1st, a bright new hope for it to be a turning point in our crazy year. And what happens? Oh, an asteroid the same size as a commercial airliner approached the Earth at a speed of 18,253 miles per hour. But NASA Asteroid Watch tweeted saying, will asteroid 2011 ES4 hit Earth? No, 2011's ES4's close approach is close, but on an astronomical scale, but poses no danger of actually hitting the Earth. Is anyone else just a little bit disappointed? Just me? Okay. Europe's Vega rocket is back and kicking. On September 2nd, the four-stage booster, which is operated by a French company called Arian Space, lifted off carrying 53 satellites to orbit for 21 different customers in 13 countries. The last time they were launched was in 2019, in July. And in 2019, the rocket suffered a major anomaly during that launch that resulted in the loss of the rocket and the Falcon I-1. SpaceX launched 60 Starlink satellites, say that three times fast, and stuck the landing. I feel like this is a headline multiple times a month, so I'm not gonna spend any more time on it, but well done, SpaceX. Speaking of SpaceX's success, also a tongue twister. On September 3rd, SpaceX Starship prototype launched into the Texas sky in a brief uncrewed test flight of a rocket designed for carrying about 100 people to eventual trips to the moon and Mars. So this is what it looks like. It's a cylindrical Starship thing. And it looks, as space.com says, like a grain silo with a rocket engine. To me, it looks a little bit homemade. I get October sky feels, but anywho, it launched and hovered for a few moments and then it was set down on its little stubby legs. Adorable. Also, Away came out. It was nice. Way to go, Hilary Swank. I'm a big fan. Didn't love it though. And it's always hard for me to watch space shows when they're a little bit inaccurate, but I'm sure you guys understand. Trump signed a Space Policy Directive 5 on space cybersecurity on September 4th. This established a set of principles designed to protect the nation's valuable space assets from credible cyber threats. The framework of this basically means that they will incorporate cybersecurity into all stages of space system development and operations. So this means protective software, but a big part of this will also be vetting people who touch the command line for a spacecraft, monitoring ground-based networks for intrusion, and ensuring telemetry links between satellite and the ground are encrypted. So that's pretty cool. China launched a reusable experimental spacecraft into orbit. Guys, this was like kind of a secret, not a big secret. They said that the launch was successful and that a long March 2-5 was the rocket, but that's it. They provided no information about the exact launch time or what the technology the spacecraft will test. Quote, after a period of in-orbit operation, the spacecraft will return to the scheduled landing site in China. It will test reusable technologies during its flight, providing technological support for the peaceful use of space. That is uh, very confusing and somewhat very direct, but very vague. I don't get it. Two space companies are teaming up with a planned 2022 mission that could help open the off-Earth economy. The two companies are California-based Momentus and Made in Space Europe. If all goes according to plan, Momentus Space Tug will be outfitted in one of MISEU's advanced robotic arms, which will perform cooperative capture and manipulation of microsatellites. Next step is the claw machine in space. <laughs> like a robotic arm. The claw machine? Okay. This just in, NASA is looking to buy moon dirt from private companies. And guess what guys? They're paying 15,000 to 25,000 for each sample. Okay, this is what you gotta do guys. It's super simple. You gotta collect a small amount of lunar soil or rocks from any location on the lunar surface, literally anywhere. Provide imagery to NASA of the collection with location data, and then you just gotta sign over ownership to NASA. So get working, guys. What are you even doing? On September 11th, Astra's first orbital mission launched, but then came down. 
So this new California-based spaceflight startup had a rough ride. Quote, preliminary data review indicates the rocket performed very well. Early in the flight, our guidance systems appeared to have introduced some slight oscillations into the flight, causing the vehicle to drift from its planned trajectory, leading to a command shutdown of the engines by the flight safety system. Astra wrote in a blog early Saturday morning on September 12th, but guys, it's okay. Debut flights rarely work. Astra said that it was not expecting perfection. Have realistic goals, people. Its primary objective was to achieve a normal first stage burn, which would keep Astra on track to reach orbit in three flights. But that didn't happen. Elon tweeted them saying, you know, sorry guys, I'm sorry to hear that, which was nice, I like that. But then they said that a software fix may be all that's needed to get the thing going. So there we go. Guys, an alien hunting telescope located in Puerto Rico was slashed into pieces after a metal cable above the telescope came loose in the dead of night and crashed into one of the radar dishes. One month later, the facility doesn't officially know what caused the mysterious midnight malfunction. I have a suggestion. It was a UFO. They want us to respect their privacy. Virgin Galactic will fly to space again next month if all goes according to plan. The Spaceship 2 vehicle, aka VSS Unity, has already made two crewed flights to suborbital space, first in December of 2018 and then another in February of 2019. Virgin Galactic said last month, quote, the second test space flight will then have four mission specialists inside the cabin. A representative told space.com, quote, if both test flights succeed, Virgin Galactic expects to fly founder Sir Richard Branson in the first quarter of 2021. How exciting, people! We're doing it! China launched nine satellites into space from an ocean platform. This was the second ocean-based launch following the Long March 11 sea launch in 2019. However, this is the first time that China has used the new seaport facilities. Six of the satellites are push broom image satellites capable of returning images showing features as small as three feet. The last three are video imaging satellites, all of which belong to Cheng Guang Satellite Technologies. You know our friends at Rocket Lab? Well, they are planning to launch a private Venus mission in 2023 to hunt for signs of life in the clouds where scientists just spotted the possible biosignature gas phosphine. And I'm sure that you all know exactly what that is, but in case you don't, like me, Phosphine is a chemical compound made up of one atom of phosphorus and three atoms of hydrogen. It's also been spotted on Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn. On the gas giants, it's quite prevalent in the atmosphere, both of which are rich in hydrogen, meaning that it could be a signal of life. But guys, that's just the beginning. The CEO of Rocket Lab said, quote, we don't want to do one mission. We want to do many, many missions there. They want to find out what happened to Venus and why. Venus, how does that make you feel? On Thursday, the 17th, SpaceX called off the launch of a new fleet of Starlink satellites due to a recovery issue on the mission's Falcon 9 rocket. 15 minutes before the liftoff, they scrubbed the mission. And then they postponed the September 28th launch due to thick clouds over the Florida launch site. So I'm shooting this on the 28th, and as of right now, I don't have any information about the new launch date. Hey, is that astronaut born with it? Or maybe it's Estee Lauder skincare in space? Question mark, question mark. Astronauts aboard the ISS will receive bottles of Estee Lauder skincare and they will film and photograph in microgravity. Guys, this is out of this world marketing. <laughs> For the last 18 months, we have been lied to. NASA has told us that they are planning on landing astronauts in 2024 near the moon's South Pole, but that last piece about the South Pole will need to take a back seat if executing the mission gets too tricky. So Jim Bridenstine went online and had a little Q&A on September 14th. Then there were a lot of headlines about the statement where he was talking about getting in the backseat of, you know, the whole South Pole. And then he came back and he was like, hey guys, listen, those were just hypothetical. Quote, to be clear, we're going to the South Pole, end quote. The reason they focus on this site, which I find interesting, is that it hides ice in dark craters where the sunlight can never quite hit. Ice can be turned into drinking water, breathable air, and rocket fuel, at least theoretically. So good luck, Jim Bridenstine. Watch what you say. This is somewhat depressing, guys. 
the melting ice sheets will add over 15 inches to the global sea level by 2100, 2100? I don't know how we're gonna say that then. I will not be there. If humans continue emitting greenhouse gases at the current pace, so um, if we do that, then we're in for a not so great ride. So let's be better, people. Astronomers discovered a new type of alien world, the first known ultra hot Neptune. Damn, Neptune is so hot right now. This means a giant planet that orbits its star 60 times closer than Earth does the sun. Previous research found that one in 200 sun-like stars possess a planet that circles its star so tightly that it orbits in less than one Earth day. Astronomers call these worlds ultra short period planet. All previous knowledge of ultra short period planets were rocks and less than twice Earth's width or so-called hot Jupiters. Scientists haven't found many ultra short period planets of intermediate size. They call this quote, hot Neptune desert because Neptune lies between Earth and Jupiter in size. Now, scientists have discovered an exoplanet that sits right in the hot Neptune desert, but this planet is much hotter than any hot Neptunes discovered yet. So the researchers decided to dub it ultra hot. How would I go about getting a job naming things in space? I feel like I could do like maybe a little bit better job, but it's fine, ultra hot is perfect. The International Space Station dodged a fast moving hunk. No, not that type. A hunk of orbiting trash. Honestly, this article reads like a clip from Ender's Game. So here we go. <clears throat> Controllers maneuvered the station away from the potential collision with a piece of debris on September 22nd. They did so, and this is the fun part, by firing the thrusters on a Russian cargo spacecraft that docked to the orbiting lab's service module. The three astronauts on board sheltered in the station's Russian segment during the maneuver to be close to their Soyuz spacecraft. And this was done out of an abundance of caution. At no time was the crew in any danger. I would not have a problem if this hung flew by. <laughs> Space Force and NASA, a true love story. On September 22nd, they announced a memorandum of understanding, an MOU, between the two agencies. The agreement officially joins the two entities in collaborating with regards to <clears throat> human spaceflight, US space policy, space transportation, standards and best practices for safe operations in space, scientific research, and planetary defense. So happy we have that in writing. The SpaceX Starship SN 7.1 tank was destroyed on purpose at SpaceX South Texas facility. It was a pressure test designed to take the stainless steel hardware to its bursting point. <laughs> Just like me, I'm this close away from my bursting point. If you remember, they actually did that last June when they blew the top of the SN7 tank. Successful burnouts. Blue Origin scrubbed its planned launch of the new Shepard rocket, citing a power glitch on September 24th. This was announced via Twitter about 30 minutes before the newly targeted liftoff time. I don't know when they're gonna do it for real because I am not in the future. I guess you're gonna have to stick around till next episode. A new piece of SpaceX's new Starship mega rocket got its chance to show off. FYI, this is called the Raptor Vacuum. Oh my God, Elon with his names, it makes me giggle. Anywho, it completed a full duration test fire at SpaceX's rocket development facility in McGregor, Texas. And boy, it was lit. <laughs> Ever thought about what you would do with $23 million? Well, NASA spent $23 million on a space toilet. Yay! NASA is launching a new space toilet to the ISS next week for astronauts to test out before it's used on future missions to the moon and Mars. And yes, that is definitely something you're gonna wanna test out before you get stuck with it on a mission to Mars. That's when murder happens. This toilet is known as the Universal Waste Management System, my God. What a name. It's 65% smaller and 40% lighter than the current toilets, and it can support a larger crew. Ew, we all know what that means. It's gonna launch on September 29th on the Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo capsule as part of a routine resupply mission. SpaceX can now launch national security satellites with used rockets. Elon Musk just signed a contract modification with the US Space Force that allows two upcoming GPS satellite launches to use Falcon 9 boosters with pre-flown first stages. That is a first 
for national security payloads. And guys, get this, it will result in saving nearly $53 million for American taxpayers across two flights. I love that. Yes. Someone is a little salty, and that is the Martian lakes that are hiding under the South Pole ice caps. For years and years, researchers have suspected that water lurks below the polar ice caps in Mars. In 2018, scientists detected evidence for such a reservoir. Then, researchers used the Marsis radar sounder instrument on board the ESA Mars Express spacecraft to scan a 155 by 185 mile area surrounding the suspected underground lakes and they confirmed the liquid nature of the previous observed lake narrowing it down to dimensions about 12 by 18 miles and they can't say how deep it is because you know our good friend Marsis cannot penetrate salty water and they are extraordinarily salty high brine content would keep their water liquid despite the super cold conditions at the base of the glaciers at Mars South Pole and by the way they found three other lakes too on the order of the six by six miles so guys we're learning so much about our dear friend Mars. So let's move on over to World Space Week. So excited that you can join the UN celebration. It's from October 4th to October 10th, and each time it's themed, and this year they're celebrating satellites. So check it out. The October's Harvest Moon will be on October 1st, the day we release this. So make sure you take time of your evening to go and look out at the beautiful moon. Kate Rubens is going to vote from space, which is pretty exciting. Talk about an absentee ballot. She will receive a secure electronic ballot and send it back to Mission Control, which will then pass the completed ballot onto the county clerk. I, you know, it's not a bad idea to get out of town uh, when the election happens, after you vote, of course. I'm gonna be camping and look up at the beautiful stars and remember that the world will not implode one way or the other. I did write this on the 28th, so if the world is on fire tomorrow or the following day and I did not report it, that is why. And don't forget about the giveaway. No one claimed this amazing patch made by the one and only Tim Gagnon. So we're gonna give that away again because whoever gets it is special and they should be excited. Okay, all right guys, here's the winner. It is Maria Kobets. Kobets? Kobets. You won, you won this beautiful patch. What we're giving away this upcoming month is the t-shirt I promised last week. So if you wanna enter that, make sure you leave a comment, you subscribe, you like this video. I am not wearing this shirt normally because I've been tired of wearing the same shirt for a year and I wanted to show my cool new quarantine shirt. Okay, well, I'll see you guys next week. Sound educated when you go to bars if they ever open by watching these videos. Bye. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, share it with your family so that when uh, Thanksgiving comes around, you guys don't have to argue about politics and you can argue about space facts. See you next week.